What are your thoughts uh, on the Grenfell Tower anniversary? Absolute shock. I just remember talking to Emma Dent Code the night it happened, before it happened. She was in this very room. She'd just been elected as an MP. She was full of hope and full of joy, excited, everything she was going to do and represent her constituency. And then a few hours later, she's confronted as a local MP with the horror and the terror of the Grenfell fire. And those images of that um, burning cauldron, flames running up the side of a tower block and people dying inside. And I went down there and the fire was still smoldering and talking to firefighters, ambulance workers and lots and lots of wonderful volunteers mosques, synagogues, temples, churches, everybody came to help and um, just seeing the life that had been snuffed out that was wholly and totally preventable. Uh, many people will be surprised that so many of the people who lived in the area have still not been permanently rehoused a year on. What do you put that down to? Well, the Prime Minister and the government personally pledged that everyone would be rehoused in the area in permanent homes and a year on many clearly have not and uh, I think we have to ask some very very hard questions about the competence of the Royal Borough of Kenston and Chelsea. We have to give great thanks to all those volunteers that turned up and helped and we have to say that it's just not good enough because to go through the tragedy of surviving a fire and in many cases surviving personally a fire but losing children or loved ones in it and then not knowing where your permanent home would be it plays on the mental health of an adult and it's deeply disturbing and destabilizing for a child not knowing that they have a permanent home and so I just think it's a disgrace and I just ask myself the question had they not been people living in a council block in Kensington, but have been living in a very expensive apartment block somewhere else in London, would they still be unsure of their future a year on? I think everybody knows the answer to that question. They were, as the Prime Minister said yesterday, let down, both in the immediate aftermath and so cruelly beforehand. And the public inquiry must establish the extent and by whom. At least 79 people are dead. It is both a tragedy and an outrage, because every single one of those deaths could and should have been avoided. The Grenfell Tower residents themselves had raised concerns about the lack of fire safety in the block. The Grenfell Action Group had warned, and I quote, it is a truly terrifying thought but the Grenfell Action Group firmly believes that only a catastrophic event will expose the ineptitude and incompetence of our landlord, the Kensington and Chelsea Tenant Management Organisation. The Prime Minister said it is right that the CEO of Kensington and Chelsea Council has now resigned. It may be. But why aren't the political leaders of Kensington and Chelsea taking responsibility as well for this whole dreadful event? Can the Prime Minister give an assurance to the House that the further 20% cuts to the fire service planned by 2020 will now be halted? Can I say to the right honourable gentleman that in his reference to the building regulations, I think he's somewhat missed part of the point in this, which is that it's not just a question of what laws you have, it's how those are being applied. And that, that is the issue. We have the building regulations about compliant materials. The question is, why is it that despite that, we have seen in local authority area after local authority area, materials being put up that appear not to comply with those building regulations? And he talks about... And that is what we need to get to the bottom of. Why is it that fire inspections, that local authority inspections, appear to have missed this essential issue? I think I can help the Prime Minister with this issue. When you cut local authority expenditure by 40 per cent, you end up, you end up, you end up with fewer building control inspectors. Uh, oh. Oh dear. 
It's pretty bad when people shout. For somebody to be sitting right by the Speaker's chair and shouting displays, let's say, a lack of wisdom, which should not be repeated. Ed order. Every member in this chamber must and will be heard however long the session has to run. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker, I was simply making the point, which seems to have upset a lot of members opposite, that when you cut local authority budgets by 40 per cent, we all pay a price in public safety. Fewer inspectors, fewer building control inspectors, fewer planning inspectors, we all pay a price. And, Mr Speaker, those cuts to the fire service have meant there are 11,000 fewer firefighters. The public sector pay cap is hitting recruitment and retention right across the public sector. What the tragedy of Grenfell Tower has exposed is the disastrous effects of austerity. The, the, Mr Speaker, this disregard for working class communities, the terrible consequences of deregulation and cutting corners, I urge the Prime Minister to come up with the resources needed to test and remove cladding, retrofit sprinklers, properly fund the fire service and the police so that all our communities can truly feel safe in their own homes. Mr Speaker, this disaster must be a wake-up call. Well, the service was extremely moving, and I thought the most moving part was the children laying the green hearts at the front with the Grandpa banner in front and the singing of There's a Place for Us from West Side Story. It was a lovely song to finish the service, but out here the questions still have to be answered. Why? Why have so many families still not been rehoused? Why are so many still going through such stress of not knowing what the future holds? And that came from all of those that um, delivered prayers and messages today. We have to ensure they're all rehoused. The inquiry must come up with some very strong answers to some very tough questions about the quality of the building, about the cladding, and the performance of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. But as a country, why do we have homeless people? Why do we have so much overcrowding? Why do we have so much inadequate housing? This has to be addressed. It's a national crisis. Very moving because they're going through a hurt. They went through a crisis six months ago. They haven't had the housing they should have had since then, but they're still reliving the traumas of that night, and people are very angry, and I can understand that. I'm here to listen to them, here to work with them, and here to try and change things. 